Hey everyone, and welcome back to the second round of Spore Viewer Creations Reborn. If you would like to submit a creation for me to remake within the series, you can do so via my Discord server. However, fair warning, there is currently a very large queue, but I'm going to try my best. And so for our very first creation of the second episode, we have the Gradiga by Gabby Bean. So this creation here was actually quite a challenge for me because the original one made by Gabby Bean just had such a polished looking appearance to it. It looks very complete, very solid. Yes, it might look a little bit simple, but it looks perfect as a champion for Dark Spore. I could seriously see this creature being in the Dark Spore game. So to try and recreate what I thought was already a polished looking creature was quite a challenge. I actually tried to recreate this one twice. My original attempt, which ended up scrapping, was to try and keep it true to its original form, how it's kind of hunched over and a bit more bestial, but in the end it felt like that I was just trying to mimic it and I wasn't doing a very good job of mimicking it in the first place. So in spirit of the series overall, I'm going to try and just completely re-envision it, remaster it. So that way I can get away with adding a couple of extra features, but still keep it to within the original theme. And the biggest change I made was to make it more bipedal. While I really like the hunched over bestial look, I also tried to imagine it being like a, just a much larger, more grand looking, intimidating warrior. I tried to keep as many of the original features as I could, but I also tried to take existing features and really duplicate them, such as the spikes on the back, the head and the elbows. I tried to maximize those and add more everywhere else. I wanted it to look a bit more buff as well, since while I was going for a taller and therefore leaner physique, I still wanted to look quite as muscular as the original one did. I added extra emphasis to the spikes and horns on the face as well. And overall, I guess to call this one, you know, bigger and better is very inaccurate because I really liked Gabby Bean's original one. I was just trying to re-envision it in an entirely different style and still to make it physically bigger and brawnier, but to try and still keep true to the original design. This one, like I said, was a bit of a challenge and I hope it makes for an interesting contrast between new and old. And then for our second creation of the episode, we have the Elilol by Digibill Cypher. This one was adorable. Again, kind of a creature that I didn't really want to mess around with too much, but I could see a couple of areas that I could personally change. But I love the simplicity, I love the colour, and I really love the overall vibes that this one gives. So for my interpretation, thanks to a bit of help and suggestions from viewers within the live stream at the time, I went with a sort of deer-like base, really trying to keep something looking rather timid, rather delicate and dainty, You've got the really thin legs and a bit of a hunched over looking appearance. I had to keep the beak. I know the beak might be a bit of an unusual catch, but that's what it was in the original one. I didn't want to just make it antelope. I wanted to make a digital cypher's creation again. And that meant keeping in certain features like the beak, the big antlers, the cartoonish giant eyes. I just want to add emphasis to their creation because I already loved it so much. I just wanted it to be more. One major change I did make actually, because I'm using modern parts as opposed to their vanilla creation, I used a lot of recoloring parts. That way a lot of the colors can remain seamless throughout the entire creation. Since it's got such lovely bright colors, but in spore, certain areas such as the feet, the horns and the beak would have otherwise kind of been recolored into a bit of a pinkish, grayish, you know, that typical spore hue. I don't really want that for this one. So by using textured as part, it allows the colors that the creature has to just be so much brighter, so much more dominant. Now in terms of new additions, the only real new addition I made was to add just much more fur. I really like their use of grass parts along the back and I just wanted to have a bit more of that everywhere to make it look a bit more bushier. But otherwise, yeah, like I said, really try to keep to the original theme, just make it look a little bit more enhanced, a bit more remastered and once again I think it's a really lovely contrast between new and old and it's nice to work on something a bit more cute and simplified every now and then I really do enjoy this one but stepping away from cute and simple, we have the Terra Tail by Jaron, a much more creepy looking creature. So based on Jaron's original design, I can see that the Terra Tail is a very literal name because it's terrible in its tail. That's where the terror comes from because that is its mouth. And so because of that, I had the inspiration to make the main body a bit of a faux mouth, make it look fake as a bit of a camouflage or a threat display. So I used a supply of horror lumps to try and shape out some fake teeth. Now I could have made the fake mouth look realistic, but then it's not really a fake mouth, is it? Sure, structurally in the game would be considered fake. But in terms of appearances, I wanted to look, you know, definitively false. You could tell it's only a mimic. And so because of that, I avoided adding too many details. I just wanted, you know, just the overall shape. I made the legs significantly larger. That way it could really look like it can hold its weight up. And for the tail, I made it a lot larger because I figured if that is where its mouth and neck are, it kind of needs to be able to digest things or at least swallow. And so I thought a large robust tail neck combination would just look a bit more plausible. Plus it gave me a lot more room to add more details. Jaymon's original design already had spikes along certain parts of the body and tail. So I figured, okay, I'll just slam it on and add more to it as I always 
always do. I wanted the pincers to be fairly minimalistic because again, it really feels like that the majority of this creature's appearance and design is in its tail and false head. So the pincers were quite small and I did admittedly forget the eyes. So I just slapped them on the shoulder, just like the original creature. Again, I could have put them in a more strategic area or a realistic area such as on the body, but the original ones on the shoulders. And I thought, you know what? It's a small creation, go wild. Speaking of going wild, for our fourth creation, we have the Crumpy by Zick Dragon. This is just a wonderfully absurd looking creature. One I really had to get kind of creative with because it has unusual parts I wouldn't normally use. Very unusual anatomy. Clearly defies the laws of gravity and physics, which is one of my basic, you know, things, needs for sport creations. So this one really took quite a bit of reimagining. And you'll see that the before and afters are dramatically different. But again, I really tried to keep within theme. So so the immediate thing I did for the crumb bee was I kept the giant head. I do not like this head part, but it would be a crime for me to get rid of it just because. I did see that the crumb bee had a fair bit of uh, grass parts around the head, so I used that as detailing and just kind of gave it like a bit of a, not really like a hairstyle, like it's just like longer fur in a way. I want its face to be fluffy. As I was working on the body, I was really struggling to think of an anatomy that kind of plausibly makes sense, and eventually I came towards something that was kind of like a mantis. I made the legs intentionally different from back in front because it just looked visually more interesting and again plausible. I really wanted like a very alien looking insect and so I took a lot of tweaking back and forth and overall my general process for this creation was to take existing parts it already had such as the fins on the rear, the pincer like hands, the big bug wings, add it back to its creation and just kind of give it purpose, just enhance it. Now I know I've mentioned several times in this video that I want to keep within the theme of original creations. I do not like a random part slapped on the body such as the eyes or the jelly buttons. It's a little bit weird to me. I couldn't really find a place for them, but I feel like I've done a fairly good job of bringing the creature together and making it look good enough on its own without all those random parts added on. I did still try to add like a bit of new things here and there though, such so as the whip wicks on the eyes, the mantellas on the rear side to look like a bit of a display. And yeah, like I said, this was probably the most dramatic change so far. And then for our fifth but not final creation, we had the Banshee Raptor by Redsaw. So just like our very first creation by Gabby Bean, this Banshee Raptor was one that once again, I had a bit of a tough time trying to re-envision because I really liked the original design. It looked very spot on the way it was. Anatomy was good, details were good, colors were good. I didn't really know what to do. So like some of the previous creations, I elected to enhance rather than just recreate. I guess you could kind of compare this one to a mega evolution from Pokemon where I just kind of took existing features just added it all over the place. I want it to be physically larger, but I really wanted to try and keep the posture, especially the bipedal-like raptor posture. I do really like that in Red Soul's design. I've added more and more feathers just everywhere, more cresting, more integuments. A bit of a classic old school sport technique as well was that whenever you have like a bunch of cresting around areas or joints, such as the shoulders and hips, you'd also add like the little gem diamond looking part as well. So that I love doing here as well, because once again, just a natural callback to the more old school techniques, along with the armor on the chest. I switched back and forth a lot between the vanilla feathers, the vanilla horror lumps, and a dark injection variant of the heligamite parts. That way I can get quite a variety of colour. Since the original one's got such a nice bright red colour scheme, I wanted to add emphasis to that and prevent my creation from looking too flat from a lack of colour diversity. And I guess in the end, when you compare the before and after, it kind of just looks like his older brother, <laughs> which isn't really a bad thing. It just kind of goes to show just how much I enjoyed Red Sword's original design that despite trying to completely recreate it, it still looks very familiar. But if you look close enough, there definitely are some key differences. And so, just like in the previous episode, you all had a chance to vote on your favorite one to be remade in ZBrush. And of course, for this video, our winner is this very Banshee Raptor by Red Saw, which worth noting, I did not anticipate how much I was going to detail it in my remake. So when I first saw this one as the next winner for a ZBrush sculpt, I thought, oh yeah, this would be really fun. But when I finished my creation or my sport creation interpretation, oh dear, this one was quite intimidating to then remake in ZBrush. Now, throughout the process, I'm a little bit wary of the fact that all I really did was just remake each individual feature since a lot of the thin parts, such as all the feathers, the whiskers, and the horror lumps, don't really translate very well in ZBrush, especially if I dyna mesh it, where it remeshes the entire mesh. It makes everything very blobby, it makes it all kind of stretch together and warp, and it's a bit weird. So, like I said, I had to spend a pretty much the majority of this model just remaking every feature. And on the one hand, it makes it look really nice and crisp, it definitely makes the entire model just look a lot smoother than this war creation. But on the other hand, 
hands, I feel like I didn't really deviate much from the <laughs> original creation. Granted, I don't do the Zed Rush ones to change them, but it's a nice opportunity to change them if you get what I mean. And in the end, the only things I really changed were the feet and the face, and I guess a bit of the coloration as well. But with all that said and done though, in the end, I am really pleased with how this looks as a Zed Rush sculpt. While I have made some very, very large and ambitious models in the past, as far as sport creations go, this is probably my, easily my most detailed or my most feature heavy creation sculpt so far. And I really, really love just how it's translated. It just looks so solid as a concept and I'm really pleased with it. Also the coloration, I had a bit of fun kind of slightly differing in terms of colors. I wanted to keep the bright reds. I wanted a bit of contrast, but when I tried experimenting the whites that Red Sword originally had in, in his creation, I wasn't really that big of a fan. It felt like it was too much of a contrast. It was very clashing. But then when I added in quite as simple as the orange rims around the gems and on the whiskers, orange may have been a bit of an unexpected change, but it just seems like such a nice complementary color. And then the piercing green eyes, I went for green because that's what the original cell stage eyes had. Initially, while I was in the zone, I thought that, oh yeah, Red Sword probably wanted them to be green. It wasn't until I was finished I realized, oh yeah, it's a cell stage basic <laughs> that this comes as green all the time. But even then, I feel like it's such a piercing emerald compared to an otherwise very ruby creature. And I just think it looks really nice. It ties up all together. So overall, I'm really pleased with the sculpt and this plus one in the previous episode, I think it's just such a nice way to kick off the series. And I really look forward to doing so many more. I'm especially just loving the bright colors. I think it just looks so nice in Zed Brush and not really something I do very often. So yeah, I really cannot wait to see what you will vote upon for the next episode. Gotta say, I am really happy with the variety of creations in this one. They're so diverse and different shapes, different sizes, different colorations and styles. I think we've got an awesome collection here. Speaking of episodes, it is time to wrap this one up. So as always, thank you all so much for joining me. Thank you all for the creation submissions and for your votes as well. And once again, if you want your own creation submitted to potentially be a remade in this series, you can do so via my Discord server in the Remaking Creations channel, the one with the little star in it. I have a very, very big queue, so please be patient, but I'm going to try my best. So thank you all so much, and I'll see you again next time. Cheers.